So fibrosis is, uh, is when you have a scar that doesn't heal well. And for example, when you cut yourself and you have a normal wound healing response, it's good. But if it, you have too much of it, then it becomes fibrotic. Uh, so you can have these ty types of scarring diseases in organs and that would be a fibrotic disorder. And so when you cut yourself, you would have fibroblasts and you know, white blood cells coming in. And they would transform into myofibroblasts and they will pull together the scar uh, the, the, the wound and then he and heal and that that's that's the typical wound healing process that we all depend on that is saving us from basically having open open wounds uh, but in in many tissues the scarring process once it's engaged it just continues and so the question the big question is what is driving this continuation of scarring and is the immune system part of it or is it basically that we have more injuries as we are exposed to other things? So we don't know. So there's many causes of organ scarring. And for some of them we know, and for many of them we don't know. So it's depending on the different organs. So the immune com component of this disease is very debated. And you would go to conferences and you would have the pro-immune uh, view and then the anti-immune view. And so, but it's clear that a number of these diseases are associated with immune cells and in our lab we are actually looking at you know our favorite cell is the macrophage and we believe that this contributes to scarring so we try to, to block the, the macrophage to become activated and become pro-fibrotic macrophage because we think it's it's contributing to the scar yeah so the, the concept that fibrosis is fibrosis is fibrosis um, it's, it's thought that the mechanisms, the molecular mechanisms involved in fibrosis are similar. So that means that me as a, as a lung researcher in, in interested in lung fibrosis, I should read all literature about liver fibrosis or kidney fibrosis. Or that means that any collaboration with, with, uh, with scientists interested in elucidating the mechanisms of fibrosis could collaborate because it's a, it's a basic biochemical process that should be very similar. However, there might be organ specificities that some different organs would not necessarily be progressive and there is a progressive nature that is different. And even within the organ you would see some, some types of fibrosis that just stays, you know, at some level of fibrosis it doesn't progress. And in other cases you would see uh, a continuum and, and, and a progressive feature. So I think that the progression of fibrosis is, might be different within the organ and across organs, but that the molecular mechanisms of scarring are very similar and you have the same cells involved in these processes, that's, that's rather clear. So in respect to lung fibrosis, I think that the, the major hallmark was last year, uh, when there was two drugs that was approved for the treatment of IPF, or idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. So for about 30 years, people had been interested in learning about the disease and done a lot of research, but it didn't really benefit patients. And for the first time, you had both Perfenidone and Nintedanib uh, approved by the FDA and in, in, in Europe and in Japan and even in Canada. And so that now there's, it's in, patients have access to some of the drugs. They don't necessarily work as good as we had hoped for, and there's, there's room for improvement, I think, that as a as a single event that is really something that is opening up the, the possibilities to modulate the progression uh, and I think that uh, currently there is many new drugs that are in this later stages of clinical trials that might be more beneficial or as beneficial as these drugs I think that that, that is a major success for the, the research field that uh, all the clinical trials that is run has to be recorded there and that that's basically years before publication of these trials you can search your favorite or your, your disease and you can see what sort of molecules are being tested and you can you know contact centers that are involved in these trials to see if you might fit uh, uh, for a trial and I think that it's a, it's a, it's a good website to be aware of and to learn how to navigate in order to be educated about the latest developments of, uh, of disease in, in general and what is coming down the pipeline in terms of potential treatments.